Welcome to a Vision Software demonstration video. My name is Matthew and this is Vision Commerce. So Commerce is going to be the red icon on your desktop, so let's open that up and get logged in. OK, this is the main working area then, and once again at the top we have the main standardised menu options. These are very similar across all the different Vision programs, but the main ones in Commerce are your purchase orders, sales orders and stock options. OK, first things first, let's go into Purchase Orders and create uh, a stock purchase order. Now, all the order screens, that's uh, Sales and Purchase, are actually designed to be the same, just to make the software a bit easier to use and a bit more consistent. So regular and on-premier orders are actually quite similar, uh, with regular orders being a bit broader and not quite as specific. On the left-hand side, then, we'll have all the basic info, like your delivery addresses, and these will actually fill in automatically when you select the site from these drop-down menus. We can enter the name of the shipper down here in any shipping instructions. Uh, you'll see you get a little warning if you enter the name wrong, but you can actually use the function keys to search. So F11 will give you the first 500 shippers on the list, and the F12 just lets you search with a keyword. Over here then you have a field for your supplier reference, uh, your date required, and any VAT information. Now these other tabs here contain a lot of other information that would be relevant to your order, but I'm just going to come out of here for now. And we're going to go and do an on primeur order. This is more of a specific feature for the drinks industry, uh, in particular wine orders. Uh, this actually limits the items you can sell to what's on the on Premier campaign you select. OK, we can come into the drop-down menu here and select the uh, 07 Rhone wine. It's quite easy to create an on Premier campaign, you just have to set up a price list and add the products on the campaign to that list. Uh, you can also adjust them quite easily at any time over here in Price List Amendments. But when you're adding your items, just make sure that what you buy and what you sell is controlled, as it's normally quite short in supply, just to make sure that you don't oversell. Now, with on Premier orders, you can buy wine um, typically about three years in advance, and the VAT actually isn't paid until the wine is delivered. But the rate of VAT will remain as it was when you made the order, so you can buy wine three years in advance but still pay the same tax. And this is just a really effective and useful system for creating those kind of orders. Once again, there are several tabs worth of information here, each of which you can fill in to uh, remain relevant to the purchase order. With the surcharges tab, you have to denote a supplier first, otherwise it'll just kick you back to the first screen. And you've got your notes field over here as well, which is just a big screen where you can enter as many notes as you like, just in regards to any details of the purchase or the wine itself. OK, let's come out of that and move on to on Premier Allocation. This is quite a useful feature. You uh, use this when stock becomes available and it lets you allocate your stock to outstanding orders uh, before you send it to the warehouse. So this will open up and it will show you all the orders concerning items in this campaign. So if you just click Allocate All, then the colour code will show up and it will show you which orders can be fulfilled completely, partially or not at all. You can also click View there and that will bring up the full details of the sales order. And once you've finished, if you just click Commit, and that will finish that off for you. OK, let's come out of there and we'll go into Customer Maintenance. So we start, as usual, on the Customer Details tab, and uh, on your left here are all your sort of ordinary contact details and such. Uh, your postal address, uh, phone number and email, contact names. You've got your fields over here for your VAT details, your VAT code, country, and VAT reg number. And what's interesting is that this can actually be connected to Sage. You just need to set up your customers here, and it will be automatically added to your, your Sage system. You can also import information from Sage. If we just come into Credit Control, uh, it's a bit more evident on this tab. Uh, you have all your empty fields here. If you just click Get Sage Data and give it two ticks, that will just import the data from there and fill that in for you. So that's incredibly useful, it just helps you keep track of things a bit more easily and uh, keep everything centralised in one place. If you come over to the Analysis tab now, you've got your uh, discount pricing info and over here you have your Sales Analysis fields. Now this just helps you keep track of who's in charge of the account, uh, the customer type and so on. But on, on this version here you can see there are 7 fields, uh, but we are actually due for an update so any future versions will have 13 fields, which help you get a bit more of a comprehensive view of the customer. Now, your Reserve Admin tab, you can see you've got your uh, warehouse and uh, AC name there. This is for when you have paid reserves stored on behalf of your customer. Uh, it lets you manage the stocks, uh, charge for storage, and trade the stocks if your customer wishes to sell. So you can just tick the box there, and you can also set up how the commission works. 
you can see there are several options there and you can set uh, your amounts as well and over here as well you have your storage charges so you can tick whether or not the customer pays charges and uh, what exactly those charges are uh, delivery addresses there quite simple and your contacts here you can set uh, which mailing list these contacts are subscribed to so the relevant ones for this contact are all checked uh, now it's important to note that the contacts, the number of contacts you can have here isn't limited, you can have as many as you want but the number of mailing lists is limited uh, the limit's 32,000 so you'll probably be okay quick look at this tab here then, the sales orders tab which as you'd expect just lists uh, all the customers sales orders uh, as you can see we can only see the outstanding ones at the moment so if we click the uh, display all orders box uh, you see one completed order uh, just appears at the top there. If there's any other completed ones, they of course will be displayed as well, but there's just the one there. Uh, the transactions one works exactly the same. This is all the customers' transactions uh, in date order. Uh, and again, this will just be the outstanding ones, so you can click display all transactions to display completed ones too. The transaction info here is actually imported from Sage, so Vision users can get a proper overview of the status of the account. Next one then is the reserve stock tab. This is particularly useful for customers such as restaurateurs who can ask uh, suppliers to hold stock for them. You can see on the left each item is listed as either paid or unpaid. So once those are paid off they'll be deducted from the quantity. It's just another thing to help keep track of your stock. And lastly for this part you've got the web trading details tab. This is where you can enter your web login details and uh, you have your export option details here as well for your electronic invoicing. So that gives you a paperless option. If you click the customer sales analysis button here as well this will display their transactions. Okay let's close this and move on to a product. So we've just picked product from the filter options over here, and if we click search, that'll display all the available products. Okay, our test data for today is going to be the Bollinger Special Cuvée. Cuvée, Cuvée, I don't know. First up then is the general tab. As you can see on the left there, you've got all your uh, basic information. You've got your unit sizes and so on, all the really basic stuff. Uh, over here on the right then, you've got your analysis codes. So you've got your six standard ones just here, country code, region code, product group, and a few other ones. And underneath you've got your uh, six drop-down menus. Now these are actually all customizable just to allow for a bit more uh, search versatility. Uh, the minimum you can have is three, and you can have up to six. This is sort of the less crucial information, but it just helps to have it filled in. In the middle of the screen there you've got your duty rates as well. So that's all your information about your uh, duty. At the bottom of this screen then you've got your uh, stock levels. Uh, so you can list these by location. You can see you've got the shed there in the office and any other locations where this uh, product may be stored. All the different uh, product states are uh, listed there in the uh, following columns. At the very bottom of the screen there you see you've got the sales analysis button. If we just click that it'll open up a large window in the middle. And this shows you a list of all the customers that have bought this product and uh, every time it's been sold. And you have your um, order dates and uh, unit numbers there. Moving on, the next up is purchasing and pricing. This tab is where we set up the prices for the product. So you can see over here on the right we have our uh, unit prices, single prices, supplier pricing as well. You have the name of your main supplier and the product code and again the price fields. At the bottom as well you have your selling prices, so you can uh, raise or lower the selling price of this item and that shows you the sort of margin that you're getting from that. Over to the price lists tab, then this just shows all of the uh, available price lists. The standard selling price is listed just here, over on the right. That's per unit and per single is listed underneath. Now if we just click listed, it'll only show us the uh, price lists where this particular product is featured. So if you just click on one of those, and there we are, we can see it's listed just here. You've got what the 1 to 9 price and the uh, 10 and upwards price. And we can remove it from there if needs be. We just click on it and remove product. And using the same process, we can add it on there as well. We can also edit the uh, existing prices in the bottom left as well. Just quickly show you the tasting notes section here. Uh, this is where you can just enter any information about the wine's properties or its flavour. You've got an HTML box here for web output as well.
this cloud section then this is where you can match your price code to the uh, Lwin uh, online Winex stock exchange and you can then display this on your uh, end of year reports or um, any storage rent charge invoices the components tab is an interesting one this is where you can uh, select component stock for mixed batches kind of like a variety pack typically for Christmas parties you can set your parameters at the top using these controls and then uh, select the stock from down below so that's quite an interesting one stock info tab then just shows you sort of general stock information shows you any rotations that contain this item uh, and any customers that have reserved those rotations and also uh, what sort of state they're in at the moment these two tabs over here then your purchase orders and sales orders just show you any um, purchase orders or sales orders I suppose that contain this particular item you can click the blue buttons on the left just to view any details of these particular orders as well okay that's enough for that let's just come out of there and go into SOP documents uh, the feature I want to show you today is over in the pending invoices tab so if we click on that then uh, all your uh, pending invoices will be listed just here now you see at the bottom left there's a button there that says uh, invoice selected or invoice all so if you click invoice all that will actually uh, send through all of those invoices at once and uh, that will update Sage as well if the checkbox is on the right hand side to exclude any orders that you don't want to show on your margin reports uh, for example any losses in store invoices or you can just invoice the selected ones with the other button at the bottom there I can actually do a little bit of stock allocation. If we come to sales orders and go to allocate sales orders and just select one from the list, that'll open up a new window. Now this is your stock allocation window and just shows you all the stock orders there and stock transfers. If you just click allocate all, that'll um, allocate all of the stock orders and that's linked to Sage as well. So you just need to click that and then click commit and that's all done. Next thing up then is a stock movement inquiry. So let's just go to inquiries and uh, select that option. Now this will actually show all the business transactions in the selected period. So let's go back a little bit. And here we are. This just shows everything that's gone on. Now this includes all your important fields. So you've got your product costs there, uh, your tax fields, uh, insurance and rent. And this actually forms the basis of all the reports that are generated through this program. OK, let's come out of that and we'll do a quick stock purchase order. Now we did look at the purchase orders earlier on, but there's one more feature I wanted to show you. So if we go into invoicing, there's once again an invoice all button. So if we'd entered anything, then uh, the invoices would appear there. So we just click invoice all and that would um, invoice all the orders and that would be linked to Sage as well. Almost finished now, we're just going to have a quick look at the admin tab. This is where you'd make any corrections to um, any information in the system. Let's have a look in user maintenance. And this is where you can set all the access levels and make any uh, amendments to uh, the user accounts for your vision system. And the last thing we're going to look at today is the uh, analysis code maintenance. So if we just go into the maintenance menu and select that one. And this is where you can view all your customers and sales reps. So if we just select one from there. And all the nominal codes are stored on the left hand side there just to show you uh, who sold what to whom. And that's all for today. That's the basics of Vision Commerce. So I'll see you next time for another Vision Software demonstration. Bye bye.